Before we're done, there's a bug in our extension, and it's a bad one, or at least it's bad once you spot it. You see, if I go and run our extension again in Safari, what you'll see is, as you start typing in a text view, the keyboard will appear. So here's apple.com showing, I go to the action button, scroll along, find our extension, then tap on our text view to bring up the keyboard. Now if you don't see the keyboard currently, you wanna to go to the hardware menu and choose keyboard, then connect hardware keyboard. Press that to toggle the hardware keyboard. It's shift command K, a good shortcut to know. Anyway, there's our keyboard inside iOS. And I type into here, I make new lines and so forth. I can type more and more new lines, more things appear on the screen. And eventually, I hit the keyboard and I go under the keyboard. And I'm still typing right now, but you can't see it because it's underneath the keyboard. Eventually, I go so far down, I'm actually off the screen, and now it scrolls correctly. And now you can scroll around, and you'll see it's scrolling underneath the keyboard. The text view goes all the way underneath, which isn't very helpful at all. Now, having our view adjust to the presence of a keyboard is tricky, because there are a number of situations you need to cope with. For example, various keyboards are different heights. The user can rotate their device at will. They can connect the hardware keyboard whenever they want to. And there's even the quick type keyboard that can be shown or hidden on demand. That's the predictive text keyboard. In all the years I've done iOS development, I've seen at least a dozen ways of coping with keyboards, and few of them are easy. Even Apple's example solution requires fiddling around with constraints, which isn't ideal. So I put together a solution that copes with all possibilities and also requires as little code as possible. If you manage to find something even simpler, please do let me know. We can ask to be told when the keyboard changes state using a new class called Notification Center. Behind the scenes, iOS is constantly sending out notifications when things happen. Keyboards changing, apps moving to the background or foreground, as well as any custom events that applications post. We can add ourselves as an observer for notifications, and a method we name will be called when that notification occurs, and will even be passed in any useful information. When working with the keyboard, the notifications we care about are called keyboard will hide notification and keyboard will change frame notification. The first is sent when the keyboard's finished hiding, and the second will be called when any keyboard state change happens, including showing and hiding, but also orientation, quick type, and more. Now, it might sound like we don't need will hide if we have will change frame, but in my testing, just using will change frame isn't enough to catch a hardware keyboard being connected. I should say that's an extremely rare case, but we might as well be sure. To register ourselves as an observer for a notification, we start by getting a reference to the default notification center. We then use its add observer method, which takes four parameters. The object that should receive notifications, which is self for us, the method that should be called, the notification we want to receive, and the object we want to watch. We're going to pass nil to that last parameter, meaning we don't care who sends the notification. So I'll go to action view controller and find view did load and add this code to that. Let notification center equals notification center dot default. Then notification center dot add observer self for the selector hash selector adjust for keyboard, a method we've not written yet. For the name, I'll say UI responder dot keyboard will hide notification. And for object, I'll say nil. And I'll do it again. We'll say notification center dot add observer self hash selector adjust for keyboard. Name will be UI responder dot keyboard will change frame notification and object nil. So two new observers to catch two different kinds of messages from a system. Now the adjust for keyboard method is complicated, but that's because it's got lots of work to do. I'll try and code it and we'll break it down as we go. So I'll scroll down, find some space underneath done and write uh, at obj c func, at obj c of course because we're using hash selector here, adjust for keyboard. This takes one parameter called notification, which is a notification type. And this thing, this is new, this would include the name of the notification 
as well as a dictionary containing notification-specific information called user info. When working with keyboards, that dictionary will contain a key called UIResponder.KeyboardFrameEndUserInfo key, telling us the frame of the keyboard after it's finished animating. This will be of type NSValue, which in turn is of type CGRect. And that CGRect struct holds both a CG point and a CG size, so it can be used to describe a rectangle. Now, one of the quirks of Objective C was that arrays and dictionaries couldn't contain structures like CGRect. So Apple had a special class called NSValue that acted as a wrapper around structures so it could be put into dictionaries and arrays. And that's what's happening here. We're getting an NSValue object, but we know it contains a CGRect inside, so we use its CGRect value property to read that value. Let's try and write some code. We'll say guard let keyboard value equals notification dot user info. This is an optional dictionary, so I'll use question mark first. And the key we want to read is UI responder dot keyboard frame end user info key. And that will be, hopefully, this will typecast an NS value. But if that whole thing fails, any part of it fails, we'll do else return. So we bail out the method immediately. So at this point, we have our NS value, keyboard value, which will tell us the size of the keyboard. We can now read its CGRect value by writing let keyboard screen end frame be equal to keyboard value dot CGRect value, like that. Now this thing tells us the size of the keyboard. We need to convert that rectangle to our views coordinates. This is because rotation isn't factored into the frame, so if the user is in landscape mode, we'll have the width and the height flipped. We can convert that using the view.convert method, passing in the frame we have and telling it what to convert from, which will be our views window. So we'll write let keyboard view end frame be equal to view.convert keyboard screen end frame from view dot window. So we'll now get back the converted frame, the correct size of the keyboard in our rotated screen space. Next, we'll check if we're hiding or not. We can say if notification dot name is equal to UI responder dot keyboard will hide notification. Then we want to make sure our text view takes up all available space. We'll say script dot content inset. The amount to push the text in from its edges will be dot zero. So don't push it all at all on any edge. But if we are not will hide, so if we're in did change frame, then we'll say our script content inset is going to be a new type UI edge insets, which describes engine insets. That's the name of it. With the top value of zero, so go right to the top, the left value of zero, a bottom value of keyboard view end frame dot height, so the size of our keyboard's height rotated for our window, and the right edge being zero, so it goes right to the right edge as well. After that, we're also going to set the scroll indicator insets. This thing controls how much margins apply to that little scroll bar on the right edge of text views when they scroll. And we can say make that equal to our script content inset. So it'll match always the size of our text view. Now there's one more thing we're gonna add, which is to make our text view scroll down to show whatever the user had just tapped on. So we'll say let selected range equals script dot selected range. And then script dot scroll range to visible that selected range. So if they tap somewhere, they get obscured by the keyboard, it'll start typing there, then scroll down to its visible straight away. And now I'll press Command R. And this should be really close now. I'll press Safari and choose Run. Or Apple.com again. I'll go to our action button, look for our extension. And now being well, when I tap in here, we'll see a keyboard appear. I can press return a few times to scroll right the way down, hit a few letters, 
And as you get near the bottom, it should start to scroll automatically, like that. That's looking much better. Boom. So we can now scroll around. You'll see our scroll bar on the right does indeed make space, so it doesn't go below the keyboard anymore. But if you look carefully, it's not quite right yet. It, there's a strange white gap here between the scroll bar and the end of our uh, keyboard. And what happen is, you know, we can't go any lower than that point there. As we scroll down, we can't get to this sort of bottom row of text here. We actually push the text view too far up. And that actually only appears on iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max's devices. If I had, for example, instead of a XR, chosen an iPhone 8 Plus or an SE, I'll try the SE. It'll scan again for apps to run. That's fine. Give it a second to think about it. Boom, I'll choose Safari again, then press Run. So now it's going to launch the iPhone SE simulator with the same extension, also running Safari. Here it's loading my site, which is helpful. Thank you very much, on brand. I'll press Action, then go to our extension, then tap in a text view, uh, bring up the hardware keyboard again, or sorry, disable it. Go to Keyboard, uh, Connect Hardware Keyboard. And now press Return a few times. You'll see now it goes right to the edge of the keyboard. And it should do. The scroll bar works correctly. So the two simulators behave differently. The uh, 10R one goes a bit too high up, and the SE does not. Now the difference is the uh, SE and the 8 Plus and other devices, without a notch, have no safe area inset across the bottom. And so they'll have to get the exact keyboard height just fine first time. With the 10R and the 10S and 10 and 10S Max and similar, uh, there is a safe area inset. And we've got to subtract that from our keyboard's frame height to compensate. So we'll say, for the bottom of our edge insets, keyboard view end frame dot height minus view dot safe area insets dot bottom. So compensate for the safe area existing with that home indicator on the 10 class devices. Now that will be zero on SE and iPhone 8 and similar. So it'll make no difference to those devices. But if I go back to the iPhone 10R, where there is a home indicator, because there is a notch and similar, there's no home button, and press run now, we should see the text view go edge to edge correctly. So here are on apple.com, I'll go to action, bring out our extension again, boom. And let's try and type in here. Return a few times, and then, and then, and more times, and then, more times, boom. Going right to the edge now. So it compensates correctly for the safe area insets at the bottom of the device. Much, much better.